10 seconds. Okay, traders. Uh, welcome to this week's uh, live market analysis session with me, Patrick Munley. Um, if you can hear me and you can see the tick me a welcome screen, you can just type a Y in the chat box. So I know we're, uh, we're online. Good stuff. Okay, so before we jump into the charts today, as always, I want to pay attention to the risk disclaimer. Uh, most important really for today's um, discussion is that the views or analysis presented by me here today are solely um, my opinions or, or my views. They are not indicative or representative of those held by uh, Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. So for those that are here for the first time, a brief introduction to, uh, to me. Um, after I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. After a couple of years learning the ropes, I left with some colleagues and went on to co-found and successfully exit a consulting startup post a merger in late 2004. I then moved on to explore my passion for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading, or more appropriately, day gambling, the S&P 500. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I basically began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains, and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure financial hit. Uh, to say that was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience, is, uh, is really an understatement. I had to stand back and figure out if it was really feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for 18 months, two years, was a period during which I upped not just my technical game, researching and developing a strategy that suited my personality, extensively back and forward testing the strategy and developing a rigorous risk management approach to underpin that. But most importantly, during this period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably the most important watershed shift for me was moving from being a highly goal oriented individual focused on financial gains to really becoming purely process orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and I had to start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional attachment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcome of individual trades. I'm not concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even strings of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. Uh, my multi strategy trading approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Uh, since 2013, I've also been managing external investor capital through a managed account service. And as you can see on the screen, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Uh, since 2010, I've also personally mentored over 100 private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in helping them to develop technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. I've also consulted to numerous brokers and trading education brands contributing written content webinars and live presentation content on a range of topics from market analysis to trading strategy development and execution in addition to my fund management and private mentoring i'm also a resident market expert for tickmill uh, providing daily market analysis and uh, trade opportunities uh, you can access that through the tickmill blog and you can sign up to receive those uh, notifications into your inbox. Uh, my other passion or passion project, I should say, is as head of trading and trader education for a leading trader education brand called fxcareerswap.com. Uh, at fxcareerswap, we're offering development and funding to retail trading talents. Uh, 
we don't just develop retail traders market and trading strategy knowledge we work on mindset development through a structured program that culminates in the opportunity to manage the firm's capital at zero personal financial risk on a profit share basis for those that are interested uh, you can see the uh, contact information for uh, the fx career swap there um, there's a telephone number and an email you can drop the guys an email and uh, they'll be more than happy to provide further information if, uh, if that's of interest to you. So without further ado, now you have an understanding of where I'm coming from, let's, uh, let's move into the charts. What I want to do this week is um, zoom out a, li a little, I guess, and, uh, and take stock of where we're up to by, um, by starting really looking at, um, at the weekly charts. And, um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to start with the dollar index. Uh, this is a, a weekly perspective on the dollar index, and you can see, obviously, that um, from the high that we put in uh, in 2016, we, uh, we had a pullback from there, and we retested or got, tried to retest those highs, and we failed. Um, that failure culminated in, uh, in what we're currently experiencing now, which is, uh, which is an impulsive uh, decline in the dollar index. I would note that um, whilst bearish the dollar index, and certainly versus this structure here, so if we consider this to be uh, an ABC correction, let's say at this stage um, in the dollar index, the equality objective for this move um, is down at 87.45. I would note that we are coming into a potential inflection point here where we have uh, trend line support uh, intersecting with the current down, uh, down channel. And, um, and what I would expect is from this 90, uh, 22 area or 90 area that we see uh, an initial bounce to correct uh, this initial decline that we're seeing. So we could complete a, an initial five wave uh, down move here. I'd be looking for um, a pullback then uh, and a corrective phase to develop. But certainly whilst we trade below this 94.77, the ultimate objective for me for this move is the equality objective down to 87.42 area. Um, this obviously then feeds into the perspective in terms of the euro dollar. So the euro dollar, if we scroll out here, you can see we've been in this uh, down, we have this descending trend line resistance from the, uh, the 2008 highs in the euro. And, um, and we recently traded up to retest that trend line resistance. And we actually got a break that we then got a pullback and consolidated. And we're now um, in extending higher in terms, of, uh, in terms of the euro. And similar to that idea in terms of the dollar index, I think we're in the latter stages of this initial advance. And what I'd be looking for now would be a test of this trend line resistance, which currently comes in around uh, 122.71. Note, we also have the yearly R3 pivot point coming in. Uh, just before there. So 122.50 to 122.70, I would anticipate from there that we're going to see a, a corrective phase develop. Now, in terms of what we can anticipate uh, from a, a scale or, or scope for that move, well, certainly if we get up into this area here, the initial objective would be a, a move back to retest the break point where we've broken high here at 120. My sense is that because of the scale of this move, this initial move will actually correct a bit lower and we could easily get back down into um, this ascending trend line support zone. Obviously, it's a little bit difficult to track at the moment because we, we're not, we don't know for certain yet that, this, uh, that we're going to uh, top out here at this 122.50 area. But if we do, certainly 120, and then maybe we see something like this, a three wave uh, corrective phase back into um, this 118.20-ish zone. Um, the midpoint of the prior um, consolidation zone before we moved higher here. And what I'd be looking for there is once we, once we get that correction, then I think we set for the next leg higher. And that next leg higher should take us into um, the equality objective versus this swing here. So what we're looking for here is, again, an A, B, C move, which would take us the equality objective and the target for this initial target uh, for this move is 128.60. And you'll also note that that coincides with um, this trend channel that we've uh, that we're forming here. So we've got uh, the support zones, the two touches here. So we look for the a, a, a touch on the upside 
into this 128 area. Now, again, from there, then we'll see that that will be another decision point for the market and will broadly coincide, obviously, with the dollar index um, testing the 87 area. So those are going to be the two key inflection points for this, this move, because what we'll either be doing is we'll either that will either complete a, a major corrective phase and then we move into a new advance for the dollar. Or if we fail then to recover from this 87, uh, 40 area in the dollar index and the 128 corresponding area in the euro, then we could be uh, we could be into a more significant decline in terms of the dollar. And if we scroll out here, you can see the bigger trend channel support, this is from the all time lows in the dollar, um, doesn't come in then back uh, until we get down into the 80 area. So if we fail to, if we fail to see a meaningful um, correction or, or, or advance from this 8740, then that opens up uh, a much the, a, 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 another leg lower in terms of the dollar index to certainly look at the 80 level. And we've also got the 161 extension of this structure here, uh, which which brings us back down to the 77, uh, 78 area. And so let's think about what that means in terms of the uh, in terms of the euro. Well, if, uh, if if there aren't any, if we don't see, uh, if we don't take out this trend channel support once we test this twenty eight area, then if the if we hold the trend channel as support, then we could be trading uh, meaningfully higher in terms of the euro because we don't really at that stage what we could do in terms of giving us some targets, you can use this pitchfork tool. And so if we connect this swing low, with this swing high and this swing low, then we see we could easily advance up into um, this 145 area, uh, which would be, the, um, which would be the, the upper parallel of the channel there. And we've got 142 as the um, the 161 extension. So it's going to be the, these are these are going to be really key areas to focus on as we head into um, next year. Some pretty interesting inflection points ahead. So it's good to take time and you know, like I said at the beginning, to basically zoom out to um, so you can get perspective on where these bigger where the opportunity is um, going forward, and certainly for the scope and scale of potential moves ahead. Let's check in with sterling. So Sterling is uh, sitting at its trend channel resistance here. Now, obviously with Sterling, we are, um, we're, we're, we're waiting to see what happens with Brexit. Um, the, the sense is that we are, you know, that some sort of deal is gonna be cobbled together here. Um, it, it, if we can get a close through this trend channel resistance in terms of Sterling, well, then we can start to think in terms of um, upside objectives. And again, what we do is we use the, um, equality objective initially as our target. So it was we hold 126.50 as the key support area, then the equality objective versus this move off the lows here would actually have us up at, at 147, would put us back into these prior uh, structural areas here. So more than achievable this 147, but what's gonna be key is really getting that close through this trend uh, through this trend channel. Obviously on the weekly chart here, ideally what you wanna see is two closes through that uh, trend channel resistance to really confirm that we have, uh, have the potential to move higher. We've also got um, this, the idea of an inverse head and shoulders here um, developing in Sterling. You can see that uh, we can easily, get this 140, 145, 147 would be my my upside targets if we can get if we can make a meaningful advance through this uh, this trend channel resistance. Let's check in with the dollar yen. So the dollar yen being in this down down sloping channel, and really whilst we hold um, whilst we hold here this uh, 112.24, we can look in terms of downside objectives for the dollar yen versus this structure. And what we can see here is that uh, we could easily be down testing um, the major trend line support here uh, and the equality objective. So we have the equality objective coming in at 90, uh, 91.99 versus this 118 high. And depending upon how we're trading, we'd also have um, this trend channel uh, or trend line support potentially coming in around 94. So we could have some meaningful um, downside objectives in, um, in the dollar yen here. And certainly, like I say, against this pivot here of the, the 112, then the pressure does remain uh, to the downside in terms of um, in terms of dollar yen. 
the Aussie. So the Aussie is uh, is looking to, I think, make a test of this um, this major trend line resistance here. And what we're looking for now, or what we have, if we can take out the prior highs here at uh, this 74 area on a closing basis, then we can start to think again in terms of the quality objectives. Obviously, we've had a very shallow pullback there um, at this 70 level. But once we hold 70 as support, then we have the potential to target a move to the 89 area being the equality objective. Now, when you, when you look at this, you, you, you know, what typically as a, as, a, as a technical pattern, what you're looking for is a, is a more def, um, defined corrective phase. But I think what we've done here in terms of the Aussie is we've corrected in time uh, not necessarily in price. And so, you know, this thing can go, can become impulsive. Now, uh, it may seem, uh, it may not seem feasible at, the, at, the, at this current um, time uh, or from this current perspective. But if we scroll left here and we look, uh, we look to what happened post the 2009 crash. Well, in reality, what we did um, was we did the same, we had the same similar type of price pattern. We didn't quite have the same traje trajectory to the upside initially, but Certainly, if we start to think in terms of um, equality objectives, well, then we uh, we more than got up into uh, that 99 equality objective versus that 76 swing low. So, in terms of thinking, uh, thinking in terms of the, the market's ability to to achieve these targets and the, and it's seeming uh, you know not seeming possible when you're just looking at the chart as is. Well, if you look to the left and you can see the scope and scale of prior moves, and that can uh, start you can sort of build that into your your, your mental approach to the markets and, and understand that there is certainly a scope. So, I mean, the initial objective versus a 70 hold here um, is, is going to be the trend line coming at 8240. So there's plenty of, of upside potential here. And I would, you know, are we going to go in a straight line like we did in, um, in 08, 09? I don't know. We could do um, based on, uh, based on the current, uh, the current uh, trajectory of recovery in the markets, obviously, everyone's um, focused on the vaccines, but I mean, if these vaccines do deliver then, um, and we get Brexit out of the way and we get stimulus in the US and we start to get rid of some of the macro issues that we currently face, then tr traditionally during periods of, of less um, headline risk in the markets, then the dollar has tended to uh, tended to weaken. Now there are seasonal patterns that suggest January is, is a very strong month for the dollar. December not so strong. So you, it's it's not necessarily in terms of your day trading. I mean your daily activity in the market. You know it's certainly not going to be a straight line. But if we look at these bigger patterns, then you can see what's what's possible ahead. Similar story in the Kiwi. I mean the Kiwis are actually a bit stronger because Kiwi's already taken out its major trend line resistance. It's checked back and. Um, and found support at the 65. So whilst we hold 65 in the Kiwi, we've got an upside objective at 78, currently trade 70. So another 800 pips higher here. And again, it might, you know, when you're looking at the chart, is this possible or, you know, can it be achieved? Well, certainly again, if we look at 2008, 2009, Kiwi, like the Aussie, you know, what it, it wasn't a straight line, but it certainly was ultimately achieved. And so, um, so, you know, there's plenty of trading to be done in the interim, but what we're trying to do here, what we're looking to do here today is just frame where the bigger upside objectives are and where the bigger inflection points are in terms of, uh, in terms of the, uh, the markets. Looney, similar pattern reading to the dollar index, uh, looking for an equality objective um, versus, uh, versus this swing structure. We just have, we, we'd be back down trading 120, 50s there and if you look again thinking about that 0809 if you look at the similarities in terms of price action that we've got in this structure here versus this structure here we can easily grind this out and get down to that 120 um so it, it, thinking in terms of targets you know this 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 is certainly a viable target we currently trade 129 so again we've got another eight eight or nine hundred pips to the downside so there's plenty Plenty of scope there in terms of opportunity. Um, Euro sterling, let's take a look at that. Obviously, again, um, behest of, uh, of the Brexit outcome. But um, where I think we are at the moment versus the, uh, the current uh, swing high. So whilst we hold 
99, then we have an equality objective at 87. We obviously have this major trend line coming in here. So, I mean, the scope, I think, for us to trade down to 86, but whilst we hold 82 as support, then we have the biggest upside target here of 105, um, which, you know, again, seems, uh, seems, you know, that's a, that's a pretty chunky upside objective, but, if we, if we, you know, as we scroll out here, you can see we're trading in this much bigger channel and 105 simply represents the top side of the channel. So, um, so you know, this is these, if we do get a pullback here into the, the trend channel support or the equality objective, you know, those are going to be certainly going to be interesting areas to, to look at on the long side because there's plenty of scope in terms of Euro sterling to the upside. Whilst we, again, what's important with these targets is the pivots. And, um, you know, the pivot here is 82. So whilst we hold, whilst we're trading above 82, then that, this 105 becomes the upside objective. Euro yen sitting on a, a major trend line. We have third test pullback, the fourth test often gives way. So if we can get a, a close here in Euro yen through this, uh, through this trend line, then I think we open up uh, the major trend line resistance which, uh, which would currently come in around 131. We also have the equality objective versus this structure. Whilst we hold 121.60 as a support, we have a 134.45 uh, on the upside there in terms of the equality objective. So we're testing some key levels here in the Euro yen. If we can get a close this week through this trend channel resistance, then I think we can start to make our way up towards 130.20s. And through there, we have the equality objective, 134. 45. Sterling yen, not quite, uh, we, we haven't broken out just yet. We haven't even got to the trend line yet. So, I mean, for me, sterling yen, we'd need to see a move through this trend line at 143.20s. Uh, uh, but versus this 132 support, we'd have a target and a quality objective, 151, but it's got a little bit of work to do yet. But like I say, we're only a Brexit headline away. Um, only Brexit headline away from this thing, uh, from this thing accelerating. So keep in mind the targets there. Aussie yen. So again, the Aussie yen is looking to take out its major trend line resistance here. And if we can, then uh, the equality objective versus this move is up at the major trend line resistance, uh, 91.60. So plenty of scope in terms of upside potential for, um, for the Aussie yen. And so really want to pay attention to um, the ability for price to take out this trend line resistance. Just, um, because once we get through there, pullback should be bought, looking for this, uh, looking for this upside objective. Let's take a look at the S&P. So the S&P, we're sitting right at the um, at the potential broadening top pattern here in terms of the S&P. Let's just bring this in here. We can make this pattern a bit clearer. Uh, so uh, as I've talked about in previous sessions, this 37.30 30, uh, area is going to be key, really. Um, if we fail here, then I'm anticipating in the interim, at least, that, um, that we get a pullback to, um, to the 3200 area. Uh, if we fail there, then I think we could be back down trade 3,100. But if we, if, we, if we get a close above um, this 3730, 3750 area, a couple of closes above there, then I think we have to, be, you know, again, the next upside objective is going to be 4150s, um, as crazy as it seems, uh, given the current economic situation for many people. Uh, the markets are obviously a discounting mechanism, and if these vaccines are coming through, then uh, we can certainly see this thing extend um, pretty rapidly um, in terms of the, the S&P there. Uh, let's take a quick look at oil. Again, if, uh, if these markets are of the view that, uh, you know, mobility is coming back and, and travel, then um, certainly crude oil starts to, uh, starts to look attractive again, and we can be back up uh, at the quality objective of the 77 level. We pay attention to how we trade when we retest the underside of this channel at, uh, at the 53 handle, that could uh, prove an area to pull back and retest these prior highs at the 40s as support. But we can then start to think about the major trend line resistance at the 60s area um, en route to that 77 equality objective. 
and gold here. Um, again, chart looks, uh, we're in this bullish channel. And, um, and if we, we'll, I'll take a look at gold on the, the daily chart in a minute and look at, uh, look at some, in, some of the daily patterns that we've got. But certainly if we can hold here at this uh, 1740 area, then I think we can, we can start to move higher and look at, uh, at 2100 uh, to the upside. And through there, then we've got much, much higher 2450s in terms of upside in gold. Um, so those are basically I, what I wanted to do there, the, the purpose of that exercise is just to give you this sense of being able to, or, or take the time really, uh, certainly, you know, the weekends to, to basically get off your trading time frame. So whatever time frame it is you trade to, to zoom out. So, you know, I don't know if you're trading the hourly charts, for example, then, you know, getting onto the, the, the weekly or the monthly charts is going to be um, really useful for you in terms of giving you perspective uh, in terms of scope and scale. Uh, of what's possible in the markets. Uh, so let's just quickly now uh, take a look at some of the daily setups that I'm tracking in terms of uh, in terms of getting into potential trading opportunities. I see the dollar index is testing now into this uh, support area, this 9050. And what I'm looking for essentially now will be a, a bounce here to get us back up into these, these prior support, this pivotal support, 9170s. From there, I still look for a fifth wave pattern to complete into this, uh, this 90 area, as, uh, as I talked about. And then from there, I think we could, see, uh, we could see a corrective phase in terms of the dollar index. So if we get a bounce here, uh, we've got the Fed and uh, the ECB up next week. So it's more than likely, we can easily see some profit taking here, but I still anticipate heading into uh, the back end of, of, the, of the year that we see this wave five 90 level tested. And then I think as we head into to January, looking at the seasonals, we could certainly see a corrective phase in terms of the, uh, in terms of the dollar index. So similarly with the Euro, I'm looking for this wave three advance to complete. We've got uh, the weekly R3 coming in 2180s see uh, how the euro responds here but any pullbacks that hold 120 are buying opportunities to trade for this uh, major uh, this, this trend line resistance the initial one uh, here on terms of the daily time frame coming in at those late 122s and then from there like i say i think we can see a, a, a corrective phase develop in terms of the euro uh, sterling looking for it to retest these prior highs at um, at 134.80s. I think we can see a pullback from there, but you know, if, if like I say, one Brexit headline away from uh, from seeing a pretty sharp advance here. But what I would suggest is that we are in this wave five zone now. So any advance I think up into this target zone of 139, we'll see uh, profit taking and, and traders looking at the uh, buy the rumor, sell the fact type setup. So caution as we trade into that 139 area would be what I suggest. Dollar yen, looking for lower now, um, looking to, to basically break this uh, trend line support here at the 103.40 area en route to a retest of year-to-date lows at, uh, at 101. Again, we can bounce from there and set up a wave four into uh, the wave five objective versus this structure here uh, down at the, uh, the psychological 100 level. The Aussie, again, looking for, we've, we've, we're just testing or just about to breach the prior high. So I'm looking for us to get up into this 127 extension, 7520 area, but project, uh, projected weekly range resistance coming in at 75. From there, I think we can see a pullback uh, back into this 73 area. And uh, whilst, we've, whilst we find support there, uh, then we target the fifth wave opportunity into the uh, the 77 level swissy is uh, is just shy of testing this um descending wedge trend line support here third test i'd be looking to uh, opportunities to get long here you can get onto the intraday charts uh, watch how we trade at this 8895 area i think we can this could be the area where we see certainly a bounce in terms of the swissy uh, get us back into uh, the 90 handle uh, and then we might have to take one more leg, leg lower here uh, before seeing um, a more meaningful correction develop. It, like, like I say, really probably looking at the end of this month into, uh, into January before this plays out. But certainly I see a, a, a tactical opportunity in terms of the Swissy here 
on uh, on the long side. Looney, um, again, whilst we hold this 134 area, we're looking initially for a 126 um, as the interim wave five downside objective. So any bounces back into this 132, I think are, are opportunities to get in on the short side and look for this 126. Kiwi, grinding it out to the upside versus this uh, potential wave four low here at 65, we have a wave five equality objective coming in at this 71 handle. Uh, we're currently trade 77.6. So again, I'd be very interested to see how we respond when we get into this area. Um, we could see a, certainly see a pullback from there uh, to retest the uh, quality objective versus this initial swing here. So let's just track that. And, um, and then we could be looking, so from the 71 level, can look for a pullback to the 6930s. Uh, we probably retest that high, and then and then we see a, a, a more tradable pullback back into these prior highs uh, as uh, range resistance to act as support at the 68 handle. And then from there, I think we can look at, uh, at long setups. Gold um, looking for a 1740 test. Um, so I still, any, any move at this stage, let me just draw this in for you. So if we come in here, back into this 1850, I still think we complete a, a pattern, uh, a cycle down into this 1740 equality objective before we can, uh, before then I think we can uh, really take off to the upside in terms of gold. Last but not least, S&P 500. Let's see how we trade at 37.30. Got a bunch of confidence there. We've got the weekly, um, or sorry, the monthly R3. No, weekly R3 coming in at 37.88. So let's see, I'm, I'm certainly gonna be paying attention to the price action when we get into this area, because I think from there we could see uh, certainly a tradable pullback um, in terms of the S&P. And that really wraps up, uh, wraps up the charts for me this week, guys. So, uh, are there any questions? And N in the chat box, if there aren't. So basically the, the, uh, the takeaway uh, for me at this stage um, is I'm looking for the dollar to, to post an interim low here and, uh, and play a correction before we, uh, before we then move into the wave five completion at this 90 level. And that obviously then feeds into uh, my view on the, on the majors here. Good stuff. Okay, thanks very much for your time, guys. Hope this helps and we'll reconvene at the same time next week. Thanks very much.